Zuck announced that Facebook and Meta are going to create artificial general intelligence and that when they do it, scare quotes, responsibly, they're going to open source it. I have no idea. Are you going to open source Terminator? Whatever, man. I don't know what that means. But we've obviously talked about Meta has been playing the open source game with AI. But to Jack's exact point, what did Zuck say in his uh, Inst- or Facebook or Instagram post announcing this uh, move? They bought 150,000 H100 chips from NVIDIA. He's flexing. He's flexing the... Fa- so people did math. How much They're is like, that worth? Yeah, that was worth. $10 billion worth. worth of chips. And this is what's so funny. People kept bringing it up. It's like, think about how big of a flex that is for NVIDIA. Right? You are in someone else's public pronouncement. Your product is a shorthand for what Jack just said. Your product is AI. We're creating a, uh, AGI. How are we going to do it? 150,000 chips. Without these chips, we could do dick. So exactly to Jack's point is like, it's energy. It's, it's quite literally more important than money. Like, you cannot do this without these chips. That is the constraint. All right, welcome to another episode of Not Investment Advice. We've got Trunk Fan, Jack Butcher, Bilal Zaidi. What's going on, boys? We're back together. We had a week's break. Uh, we did a we had an episode out for you guys, obviously, but we didn't record for a couple Got weeks. Got punished so. by the YouTube algo. I, I look every now and then, people. <laughs> I look. I'm looking. I know How most. Do we get of punished? Our, what happened? I know most of our listeners are listening, and not. Yeah. Um, we don't like. We don't really do YouTube. Um, well, I mean, we post a video, but you know, every now and then, for my ego, I'll like look at the numbers, and they mean they're completely fucking meaningless. Like we don't have any size, and it's all within like, uh, uh it's all within between five hundred to a thousand every week, right? But I noticed this this evergreen one, which are our some of our favorite episodes. I think they all go is punishing because it's not newsworthy. But you know what? We're not. We're not making content for the YouTube's algorithm. Have you guys this seen is your, this? This is your email from last week. People exactly. aren't subscribed. You had a Have great write-up about this. People, hit up uh, readtrunk.com, subscribe. But anyways, not showing my newsletter. That, have you guys seen? There's been probably a dozen top YouTubers have all quit. Oh, I saw that. Month. Yeah, yeah. A dozen of them. Did you, you watch the MKBHD video? His actually, video was amazing. You know what? Let's Marcus pin that at Brownlee. the end. So let's yeah. do this. Blah, why don't you tee up what we're going to talk about? Yeah, we're yeah, on a hard stop, that. people, but not like one of those hard stops when like you have a chat with somebody like, hey, man, like how many minutes do you have? You'll be like, no, ah, like uh, Jack needs to be on a Twitter spaces yeah. or X spaces. Jack, uh, or, uh, or Jack's going. We don't know what Jack's doing, but it's a hard stop at this point now in 68 minutes because Trung won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> it went from 70 to 68 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All it's right. All let's content, talk, so, there we go. Exactly. So, all right. We're going to talk Apple talking? Vision Pro. Uh, we've we've touched on it before a little bit when it was announced, but now that is out properly, there's a Pre-orders, little bit of reaction to that. Deliveries on February second. I'm excited. Yeah, exactly. All right, we'll talk about that, and then we're going to talk about Mang, Zuck, and Altman. Mang is Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, and Google. The new version of Fang. We They're talked about Fang a lot for the, a long time. The VC startup investing. They're exactly. Crushing. So they, they were, yeah, we're going to go into that, how they're investing, especially in AI. And it's quite interesting where they're doing it with basically compute credits. So we're going to break that down as well. And then we'll touch on Zuck and Altman, uh, two leaders in, uh, in AI basically now. So um, Zuck is trying to get to, ge- uh, you know, artificial general intelligence, uh, AGI. And uh, Altman is doing some crazy stuff with chips, so we're going to break that down. Then we'll talk about the speech from Millet. I don't know how to say his name, boys, but the president of Argentina. The guy with the chainsaw, we've seen it. The winner of Davos. The winner of Davos, exactly. There was a great speech. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about that, how it was translated from Spanish to English using AI as well. Uh, And then we're going to talk about the slow death of media, gradually then suddenly, pitchfork, Sports Illustrated, LA Times, a bunch of stuff going on there. So yeah, boys, let's start with Apple Vision Pro. Are you buying it? Trunk, trunk did you get a pre-order in? What's well, let me hit you, you guys with the meme of the week, which is related. So I don't know if you guys mentioned uh, Marquez Brown's game. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. Well, Marquez last week, Apple gave another demo. For the listeners, uh, it, this is from Andrew Manganelli. And uh, it's it's of a lady wearing a neck brace, and it says "Upcoming Apple Vision Pro accessory." Right because on. if you didn't catch the joke, the context was 
Marquez Brownlee put, posted a tweet. And he's like, damn, man, like after 15 minutes, this Vision Pro is pretty heavy. And like Marquez is the kingmaker. So he starts a whole news cycle about this joke. And then I started seeing tweets online on the news feed of like, you know, when you do the neck workouts, you put the weight on the chain around your neck and like you're fucking bobbing your head up and down. Hysterical. So I'll, tell, I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit inside baseball. I sensed what was happening on the timeline, right? I sensed it. People want jokes about neck strength. So Trump fan has been sitting on this tweet for a while. I'll show you the next one. It's of Max Verstappen, who is of the top <laughs> F1 racer in the world. This for people that don't know. Yeah. Look at him keeping the reply in there, looking cropping yeah. it. You like that, right? So for people that don't know. Verstappen, yeah, with the crop, you said. Yeah. 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 Elon like in the crop. response. I had to do that. I had to let people Gotta know let that. Know, man. Gotta upstream. Let them know. These jokes are upstream of Elon. <laughs> but uh, F1 drivers, they have to do so much neck working out because those, when they decelerate from 200 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour on these turns, that's the equivalent of 30, 40 pounds dragging on your head. And uh, so if you've ever, if you've never seen these YouTube videos, Google Max Verstappen neck workout. It's wild. So I knew that once I posted this, it just get quote tweeted to the heavens with people preparing for Apple Vision Pro. That's exactly what happened. That Elon jumped in. But anyways, that's a little bit inside baseball. I yep. sense what was happening on the timeline, so I threw out some bait. Okay. Well, boys, a little corner of red pill Twitter would be uh, <laughs> conv convincing you that the width of your neck gives you an advantage in life from an aesthetic perspective. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. That's apparently a fact. When I believe it. Mate, is it like proper, it's the equivalent of the women uh, hourglass the golden rule. It's a golden thing, rule. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's, or yeah. The, the hourglass figure. It looks like... It's like a it's, ratio thing, yeah? It's fertile. So, yeah. You look so, yeah, fertile. Yeah, there you go. There you go. It's uh, going to be... That's, that's the, if any Apple marketers are listening to the pod, <laughs> lean in, man. Thick necks for everybody <laughs> that uses the Vision Pro. Yeah, there I mean, like, go. look... Could have just hopped in an Elon's reply to my read the, the reply exactly. to my. That's actually a yeah. great shout. Why it's weren't you jumping shout. in there, Timothy? Right. True, Tim there Apple. All right, let's talk going. about Apple Vision. But no, so Chung, you you probably follow this more. Well, I mean, Jack, I'm curious to hear your take as well. Like, are you actually? Oh, did Jack it? get it? So it's not real. I don't know. I, don't know. I just haven't. I, I think I maybe I will. Like, look, I got the the Quest back there. That's had about fifteen Three minutes uses. of airtime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I guess that's a different that's a different evaluation though because it's like those are games and, and you're not in the Apple operating system, so I think it's not really a fair comparison. Obviously, just a hardware similarity, but I don't know. Nothing screams at me like that. I really want it. I want. I I should have it just to figure out what's possible on it, and I will get one. But um, not like it's not like paradigm shifting. In the moment, I think over time, obviously, anything that Apple commits resources to is going to be a, a thing. But um, yeah, I just haven't gotten around to ordering one yet. But when I do, I'll give my take. What is it like? Three and a half grand, right? Or t three grand? I think it's three and a half. Yeah, that's thirty five hundred without the accessories. I don't know if you all without saw the, the neck accessory. accessory. The, the, yeah, the neck crazy. accessory. Yeah. The two hundred dollars travel man. kit, dude. First what of all, does okay. a PlayStation Five cost? 600 bucks question. or something but they sell those oh yeah they sell i mean apple's selling vision pro at cost also pretty much uh but yeah i think uh playstation sold the cost playstation 5 is 470 bucks so this yeah, is like order of magnitude yeah. more than any consumer electronic product oh, having yeah, said that you gotta really want to be in the game with it, it oh it sold, sold out. out the first eighty thousand are gone oh, so 80, to answer your question okay. below i did not get one of well a because i'm in canada if i really want to i could have shipped it to the states i'm just gonna wait till the freaking dude in canada because i actually want to demo in yeah, but store. i guess that's telling in itself it's not like oh my god i need to get one right like none of us have yeah. been like and we're normally on the we're trying to get new stuff generally speaking but I'm, I'm curious to hear from people listening if anyone ordered why you ordered it and stuff as well but so the, the big thing here is the use cases right like there aren't many apps for it we were just talking about before we started well there recording. are apps so this is this is the this is the news story this week this is the big news story so the apps there's 1.8 million apps in the vision pro app store uh, over the weekend so i might have changed my gone up and down only 150 are native vision pro apps i don't even know that's a bad thing necessarily right that might not be a bad thing because what Apple did do was it allowed, uh, they gave software developers and any app owners 
If you had an iPad app, you could port it over to Vision Pro. It doesn't really change much. It just made it more amenable to the Vision Pro Vision. You're just going to have an Asana board or whatever yeah. on, your, <laughs> exactly. on your face or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's, a well, tough, it's like a tough format. The trade-off's so crazy with the weight of it. Like, it can't do what that thing does, right? And it's not designed to... You're not supposed to move around with it on. Am I? Is that right? You're just supposed to well, like, sit mean, there and use your fingers and stuff to Well, to your exact things. question... Marquez Brownlee, who everybody should be following up around this, he actually says the Quest is heavier, but the battery is in the back of the thing. So his whole point was that it's in the back for the Apple yeah, or for the no, because the bat the battery pack for the Apple is separate. It's an external right. pack. So he's basically saying those like, yeah, the Quest is heavier, but because the Vision Pro doesn't have the counterbalancing weight, it's actually uncomfortable. So like, mm. there's all these trade-offs that have to be made, right? And uh, something brought up an interesting point is that if you look at any of the uh, the visuals that are provided by Apple Vision, uh, Apple marketing, none of them show the external pack, obviously, because they want to be sleek. We're one piece, not one piece, but like, is it, just, they don't want to show that complication, right? And um, just to, back to the apps quickly, because you, know, you bought the Santa board, you made a great point, Blau. Because what's the alternative? So I'll give you some names that are not even porting over the iPad apps. Netflix, Spotify, and YouTube are not doing it. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty wild, right? Uh, part of it, I think, is a big F you to Apple because this is one way for them to be like, you know, F you guys for everything you've done over the app for the past decade without yeah. actually hurting themselves, right? Because it's yeah, not like- there's not there's, enough people using it yet exactly. for them to care. When there are 100 million people change. using it, you'll be like, oh, of course we want 100 million eyeballs. But, but that basically sounds like what the standoff is. So like Apple, so from what I've read, so the best people read about this are Om Malik, O-M uh, space L M A L I K, and John Gruber from Daring Fireball, and then Ben Thompson a little bit. But it seems like what's happening with developers is this. Over the past decade, Apple just not has been great to developers. They provide development kits, but they're just kind of being shitty, right? They're like, we created the greatest consumer product ever. True. We've talked about this podcast about App Store, uh, software, hardware melding together. But because of that kind of ego they have, they're like, we're going to milk you guys. We're hitting you with this tax. You can't do external links. You know, uh, antitrust lawsuits are happening the past few years. They're trying to break the App Store monopoly. It is a monopoly. But the difference with Google and uh, uh, Bilal's former employer, which we have to talk about once a week, <laughs> is Android. The difference with Android and Apple, you might have seen a couple of cases have happened where Android actually has lost lawsuits about their Google Play Store. And the reason they've lost, though, is because Android is playing themselves as like, we're open. Anyone can use Android. We will work with any OEM, uh, you know, original electronic manufacturer. We're not forcing you to use any of our Google stuff. They really are, though. Like, if you want the best version of Android, you have to install Gmail, YouTube, all those apps, right? So they're losing these cases. Whereas Apple's whole position is, we're special. You're going to pay our tax, Right. And yeah. that's why they're not losing their cases. They're so upfront about it, but it's costing them these developer relationships. So I'm going to throw that out to you guys. What do you think about, this goes to the App Store question, right? So why don't we answer that specifically? Give me your thoughts, because we haven't spoken about App Store in a while. How much do they get to milk people because of what they've created? And then now it's kind of biting them in the ass. So any thoughts around that? Jack, any thoughts? I mean, I don't I. I think we've talked about this before and the idea that like the 30% tax really on the in-game purchases feels like in my mind where the, where it goes too far, you know, like 30% on the initial distribution of the product feels fair and feels like, you know, the infrastructure that they built is so insane. And the, obviously the, cost that it took to create that but then what's killing the applications is accounting for that 30 percent in whatever you develop i feel like that stems like beyond the install right so any business or product has to has an additional 30 percent baked in their margin for it to be economically viable which is which is what crypto never took off right or the nfts right yeah. Yeah. I think the only things that really seem to, which is really, I mean, there's an interesting discussion here around like the in game 
commercial stuff, it almost incentivizes the most ridiculous use cases where like you're buying fake poker chips or farmland pigs or whatever it is people do on the, you know, the, what was that big, you know, those games. Oh, Farmville? Where you, Farmville? Yeah, Farmville, where, where they like zero margin um, games where you're buying ingrained currency and you can afford to just take the 30% haircut versus building things that like in the in the nft land for example 30 percent off the value of something that has a market price just makes it completely untenable right the fact that that is ownable and interchangeable and interoperable and in some people's minds a step forward in digital commerce is completely invalidated by the app store model so in my mind i think the initial distribution you know you want to be onboarded into this and every install costs you 30%. That seems fair, but the ongoing stuff that feels against the spirit of, of it to Actually, me. Actually, Jackson, you brought up, I think, two contradictory points. So I want to I want to make sure we're on the board here. Because you just you mentioned that these additional in-game purchases, they cost the gamer, the game company nothing, right? Right. So there's an actually an argument where because it costs them nothing, that's actually where Apple and the Apple does 70% of App Store revenue is from games. And that's just free money. So if you're a game developer and you're selling, like you said, like farm coins, you actually don't care that you're giving them the 30%. Right, right. It's these other businesses that you're talking about, like uh, uh, bookmakers, uh, um, and, uh, like fitness apps, like right. where you're ongoing, you're providing services, that hurts. So like, it, it, would that, would you agree with that tease out where it's like gaming actually, because the variable cost of delivering one more unit is zero. Well, but if you're a fitness app, and right. you're like, a, okay, that, I think that's where we're at. It's like gaming, but these other services that actually, if there's an ongoing 30% uh, hit because it actually costs you to deliver it, that will kill your business. No, I think gaming, I mean, I think everybody should pl have the same rules applied. I'm just saying like they've gotten away with it because of the, the gaming mechanic and the zero ah, cost of replication of points, right? Where arguably more useful and productive things could have been built without that 30% tax, like the services that, Books is a great example, like the Kindle thing. Like you could make an argument that more people would be reading and learning if there wasn't the 30. We, the we need to explain the yeah. Kindle thing, how insane it is. Yeah, Can you, you guys go talk on, through it? When you go, I did it a few days ago. Like you go to buy a book on the Kindle app on like your phone or whatever. And it says you need, you essentially need to go to it's your desktop. It's insane, dude. Yeah. It's insane. And Spotify is the same, I think, right? Book. Spotify, I yeah. think has the same, um, and so even Audible, I think you you basically buy with a credit. So you've you've prepaid kind of like elsewhere. And then in the app, you can press buy with credit, but you can't, if you say like buy this for $10, it you, they don't basically allow you to do that. Well, and it's just, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, go on, go ahead. So I was going to say another recent example is the Twitter subscriptions, right? Like through the app, they actually oh, yeah. mark it up by 30%. They charge it more. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which, which that would be an interesting way for everybody if they like, organized on the app side and said, Hey, you can go and buy it here for 30% off, or you can do it through the, like most consumers are blind to the 30% tax, right? We're yeah, and let's, reading like, all this stuff and understand. I did that as well. The, like on the Twitter X stuff, um, like one time I needed to, to pay for it and I just did it cause it's in the app and you press it really quick. Yeah. I wasn't even registering how much it was. And it was what, like twelve ninety nine versus nine ninety nine or something. Yeah, yeah. And then when I went on desktop, I was like, wait a minute, is that the same? And I checked, and I was like, then I finally realized. I don't think it even said like in brackets or something. This is an iPhone version, like price or something. Maybe that's like in that. their terms. Maybe they can't. Maybe you're not maybe allowed to do that. Maybe they can't call it out yeah. or something like that. Yeah, there's a probably so. But that that is kind of like DoorDash. Like if you order on DoorDash or Seamless or whatever, and you regularly go to a place, and you're like, why are they charging? $17 for white rice here. What's going on? And it's just like the markup is because they're, they're adding all these different Bro, things. You know what I mean? The side, you know when they hit you on the menu, it's like people also tried this and it's always it's always the add-ons, right? You know when you go to the grocery store and oh, they throw yeah. you those high margin magazines and oh, candy yeah, bars? Yeah, yeah. Bro, the, the $5 rice is one of the biggest <laughs> it's, rackets. It's so ridiculous, so yeah. $5 it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Yo, so, you know yeah, what? I, it's keeping, it's keeping my on. Vietnamese restaurant it's keeping, keeping them alive, yeah. It's keeping Hung's full palace going. So I'm paying five dollar rent. You gotta do it. You gotta do no, it. No, no, that's, that's great. A, I mean, that is another great example. That's another great analogy of like you businesses mean the just getting bled. 
by yeah. the platform for distribution. But that's yeah, the, you know, distribution the one thing is, say is what are they? What is it? What is what, Jack distrib- Butcher tattooed on his forehead? Distribution is okay. <laughs> no, but Jack, I would say actually, I actually think DoorDash, Seamless, etc. For where I live, anyway, maybe in in other areas, it's different. I've discovered so many more restaurants and bought from them because of DoorDash. Whereas the App Store, I rarely am just like, let me just browse the App Store and yeah, find fair. an app. Like I normally know what I'm Dude, looking for. Who or are something the like psychos that, that are browsing? Because you know what people do. Oh, I would yeah. like to know. It's probably other developers. Do you know who is? Those productivity app, my, you know, yeah, those yeah. people that love every single productivity. And I say that as someone who's tried a lot of them and is a recovering productivity I'm over. Me uh, and Bob person. Me and Bob the same. This is yeah. Bob. I think we've settled on the same state. Yeah, we're on the midwit curve. Here we're is back. it. This is this yeah. is productivity. Go for a fucking two hour walk every day. That's it. There we go. That's all yeah, it, man. <laughs> Clear your head. Go for a two hour walk, and. Uh, but, uh, and realize you don't need to always be productive too. That's uh, more important as well. But um, well, Jack, let me hit on. Jack though with a big counterpoint. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm not picking on Jack here, but his actually point Trung is with his second counter. Yeah, I like this. well, we on, mentioned though. Go. Well, Jack yeah. is because Jack brought up actually his point about the gaming that they shouldn't be separate. Is a, a game. Trung doesn't have an original thought in his. In his entire life, I right? also love you referring to yourself in the third person <laughs> yeah. extra today. Well, well when you <laughs> roast me, you got to Trunk doesn't have an original thought in his entire life. It's like the whole ideas don't have pe- uh, people don't have ideas, ideas have people. But actually, Jack's point was actually contra entirely to John Gruber's. John's like, uh, and well, actually, not necessarily true. Jack's point is best case scenario. John Gruber's point is reality. Apple is not giving up seventy percent of the App Store revenue, which is in games, right? They're just never going to do it. They will squeeze gaming companies. And to, to Jack's point, though, it makes sense because the gaming companies literally can afford it. A farm coin is costing you nothing in variable cost. Zero marginal cost of delivering it. So Apple will never stop that. But the PR win for Apple is if you're not a gaming company, we're going to cut the tax down to 15%. Gaming's too bad. You, you're eating on our addictive device we created. We're taking our pound of flesh from you. So that's what, anyways, that's John's point. Um, I don't know if you want to rebuttal that or anything else to, around that. Uh, if not, um, I had one more thing about App uh, Vision Pro. But other than Go that, on, Jack, anything else? Yeah, anything? I just one. I reckon, like, I think we had this in one of the AMAs recently, where people are like, "What's the most corrosive thing, or what's like a thing that we'll look back in at 10, 20 years, and it'll be?" And this is not about Apple. This is just about like the idea of the in-app, endless in-app purchases for something that you don't own or have no claim of ownership over is the most insane like you hear those oh, stories yeah. people like spend 10 grand a month on like farmville points or something oh yeah yeah just, or the worst mad. nowadays is like t- uh, like the dating apps as well people be because I, I, i've been out the game so oh, long yeah, even, yeah, but yeah, someone yeah. told me recently they were like oh i bought her a flower or something and i was and i was like what what this wasn't there when i used it like a long time ago and they were like, oh, yeah, nowadays you can tell them, you can signal that you, you only get one a week or something. So you oh were that my. person. I'm like, oh, my God, that's it's wild. Making, this is making the NFTs look like, you know, the <laughs> buy and hold strategy of the S&P exactly, 500. Exactly. Absolute madness. Well, you Incredible. want to know what? People make fun of these overpriced JPEGs. But exactly to what you guys just said, Apple literally sells $50 billion plus a year on gaming in-app purchases. Think about that. Man, that's a good, this is a good, yeah. I mean, we should put, we should do something on this. Like we should co-write something about this. I we should, yeah. Good. Jack, let's do it. I'm in. Let me oh, write off that. some of Jack. Let me get some of Jack's uh, audience. Let me shuffle <laughs> them over to Sat Coast. <laughs> Yo, uh, Trunk, do you said you had one more point on this before we oh, move yeah. on? Oh uh, yeah. The other uh, point was, and this, I, you, both of you guys will appreciate this. This is something we talk about. The, We've talked about this ad nauseum, and I, I have to make it clear. Apple is the greatest consumer product, I mean, iPhone, in the history of mankind. Two trillion dollars sold, a billion plus phones. You give I'm it to any child. I'm still laughing that Jack said Bitcoin is there's not was the greatest invention <laughs> of all time. <laughs> Sorry, I just I had a flashback now, there did, when you said the greatest of all time. I might, uh, I might have to check the comments to see when we brought the. As you know, somebody actually shout out somebody in the comments. I'm detouring again before I finish my vision problem. Somebody brought up a great point. Somebody wrote in the comments to the YouTube uh, a clip that said, Trung and uh, Trung Jack Blau, you forgot Haber Bosch process as the greatest invention ever because it's because Barely didn't mention it. And Barely is a thin rapper over a chat GBT. So, <laughs> so blame chat GBT. No, 
So the Haber Bosch project is you fix nitrogen. For people that don't know, uh, you need to fix nitrogen to make basically manure and fertilizer. And before this invention, so Fritz Haber invented it, and um, or was it Bosch? Either way, Karl Bosch, German dudes that also invented dynamite. So they were involved in the invention of explosives. But TLDR, without the invention of uh, this process, you couldn't fix nitrogen. And if you can't fix nitrogen, you run out of fertilizer, basically. Because you know what they did in the 1800s of fertilizer? Fucking bird poop. There's like this bird poop island. You guys probably know Bolivia. You know Bolivia or Chile? I think there's it's called island. Manhattan. There's a lot of bird poop There's there a lot of bird well. poop, yeah. No, but there was a multi, like at the time, inflation adjusted, multi-billion dollar industry where you just scoop bird poop off this island, off the coast of uh, Latin America. That's and because wild. bird poop has nitrogen in it. Wow. Uh, anyways, very That's a fun invention. fact. That's yeah, a real probably fun saved fact a fan. billion, probably saved a billion, a billion people's lives, to be honest. Uh, okay, wow. back to Vision Pro. Thank Go you for on. the YouTube comment, by the way. Uh, Vision Pro is a uh, great point. iPhone, you give it to a kid, iPad, immediately. <laughs> By the way, I was just going to say, sorry, sorry. Jack, just gonna say we have to get C4 sponsor for like <laughs> yeah, the rant, yeah. the trunk yeah. rant, and we <laughs> yeah, retroactively apply it. Like, yeah. This no, next time, train of thought is sponsored by C4. Say, yeah. Do you know what's like crazy? And and like yeah. The amount of people who have been commenting about C4, like I literally only know about C4 because of your thing. I was in London. There was people I spoke to. Well, it was a friend of mine who listens pod. And he's a, ma- I mean, he's a massive, he's listening to this right now, massive gym guy. Like the most beautiful hench man yeah just and and How's he was neck? like man i might How's have to your boy's neck thick What's neck? The oh neck it's like thick yet? huge neck <laughs> oh his his oh yeah yeah definitely i mean his arms his arm is bigger than my whole head he does Incredible. shrugs he has a full day to shrugs he there does full day push day and just shrugs, <laughs> just shrugs, shrugs shrug day. <laughs> all right back to uh let's keep it on track here that's okay. my job so so an iphone ipad you give it to any kid dude you give an a, a 18 month old an iphone these guys will be in the settings, changing the lightings, and like they can do, they know everything, right? It's instantaneous. This is a problem with the Vision Pro. You want to know how much time the Apple Genius Bar they're carving out for the Apple employees? They're teaching them to do 25 minute demos. So you're going into the retail store, okay? They're going to fit you with the proper lenses. They're going to have the the light blockers. So you have to buy these light blockers to cut out any light to go inside. They have these straps that you have to do. There's like a hundred different strap sizes. How much friction is that? Yeah, that's a lot of friction, man. If Apple can sell, if the Apple can turn Vision Pro into a $50 billion product, which it probably will, like it's Apple. Tell you what's great about it. It goes against everything to do with uh, computation. Apple's entire thing is about making uh, compute instantaneous. It's to make idiots like me know how to use computing products instantaneously. They're doing 25 minute demos. So this might be their greatest achievement ever. I think it's a real, you know, like the old, we've probably all studied this at school or whatever, like the adoption curve, like we've talked about in the pod, obviously you get innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority laggards and innovators, it's like a bell curve and innovators normally like two and a half percent, I think, or 5%, whatever the percentage of population is. And the, me- the example I always remember learning was like flat screen TVs. Remember when they came out and they were like three, four grand. Like if you really wanted one, um, you had to pay like premium money. And the only people we saw originally was like ludicrous on cribs, right? Like he's got one in the, in the bathtub and all that. And back then that's what you wanted. And then now you get one for like $300. And I've, I've literally had one for 10 years and it's $300 or something. So, but so if you look at the price kind of curve, I'm assuming they're just right in that early stage, and the this maybe if you go five to seven years later, this is maybe one and a half grand. I don't know. Do you think the price would change? Because they also uh, have the a price position too, right? Oh yeah, they, guess, they'll yeah, get this thing. True. They will. They will push Smaller. this thing down. Well, to our point, let's why don't we wrap it to the initial point? How about let me ask this to end. <laughs> I got a chopstick. I was stirring my coffee Jesus. electrolyte drink with this thing. We have a okay. chopstick as well. That's incredible. Okay. Let me ask this. What price point would you jump into the Vision Pro? I think this is an important question. Today, if they well, how much? The price, how much is the How much are the equivalents of like the... It's like sub a thousand bucks. Yeah. yeah. I would say like I a think, thousand is a clean number. Okay. A G? Okay. Here, like, and here's I a crazy would, thing. I would happily pay more if it was really good. If I was like, okay. oh, wow, I can do stuff... 
Like, for example, I've seen people use it for like boxing and they're like, oh man, this is sick. I can work out at home and they really enjoy it. Like genuinely, they can't get out of their house and that's the thing they're able to do, sneak it in. And if there was something like that, I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But I don't have any need for that personally myself. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, Quest they need to Pro get it. Is, uh, a th- is a thousand. Okay. By the way, yeah. though, boys, one application for this, I don't know how good it is, but the pod. Imagine if we did mm. the uh, we did the pod in three uh, spatial site. Yeah, Apple. If you're listening and you want a uh, a pilot a sponsorship here, we'll take one each. Well, people we always go. yo people always say like podcasts or like hanging out in a room with your boys, yo. And I listeners, let us know. Maybe we'll be one of the 150 apps that launched them. And can you imagine we did an <laughs> NIA app? <laughs> you just have a Trump no. sitting in the corner Bro. in your. Uh, Rambling on about no, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, r- rambling about the Haber Bosch process. I'm That's not gonna it. lie, man. Dude, <laughs> being one idea. of the first 200 apps where we're like, we're the first Vision Pro native <laughs> podcast, bro. Yo, this is a fucking sick idea, man. There we go. That, we're the not moment. ever doing. We're not. Well, yeah. I won't say ever. We're not doing sponsorship at the moment. We only get paid in free products like saunas yeah. and chairs Heal and Apple Vision. Heat. What's com. the heat limitation on the Vision Pro? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 that's, can that's be, a, just can merge be, them together. Can it be using an indoor sauna yeah. with multiple lights? And yo, man, my seat is hella comfortable. What am I sitting on right now? All oh, right, <laughs> Herman <laughs> Miller, boys. Yeah, yeah, Hermes. Yeah, yeah. Is it a coincidence that Hermes and Herman Miller both start with H E R? Is it a coincidence? <laughs> Go um, look at the stock ticker, people. Non investment advice. Non investment advice. Publicly traded. Right. Okay, I don't want to get my boy in trouble. I do want to okay. ask you guys one last question on this, and I, I'd shared it in a group chat, but let me just pull up my screen here. Share screen. This was all over the feeds. It's kind of funny. I actually find it quite funny, but um, one second. Share sound. You guys saw this, yeah? Can you see my thing? Oh, Disney yeah. announced the oh, holotile floor. Directional floor in All right, any just direction give it I want, 10 seconds. It will automatically do whatever it needs to have me stay on the floor. So good. And what's amazing about this is multiple people can be on it. Oh, wow, talk just like this. the real world. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I just give one plug before you get to the end of the clip? I think a friend of the pod, Bored, so why is everybody walking on this look like uh, like a pensioner going to the yeah. toilet in the middle yeah, of yeah, the night? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're like really going slow, well, right? Well, it's yeah, V1. Yeah. For the for the listeners, it's called yeah. Holotile. It's yeah. from the Imagineering group at Disney. So Imagineering means imagination plus engineering. Mm. Uh, geniuses. The guy that made that, Lanny Smoot, legend. He's the greatest inventor in Disney history, the most patents. Uh, so quick thing about that. Great that you brought that up, Bilal. So basically what it does is it's uh, just imagine a uh, one meter by one meter uh, floor that's moving. So you walk on it and you can walk in virtual environments. You add that to the Vision Pro and then you play Grand Theft Auto 10. Hey, Mo, <laughs> dude, imagine jacking a car with that. Oh my God, dude. Not, oh, the not other like things that go on in advice. GTA. Yeah. Mm. No, but I will <laughs> say, no, when I first saw it, I was you know, like half asleep. And I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. I saw it like four or five times and didn't like want to even watch the full video because I was like, oh, this is another random hype thing. But then when I watched it, I was like, oh, that's actually like at an early stage, long term, is quite an important thing for this um, AR, VR stuff that we all talk about. And the reason it's related, obviously, is because the VR we were talking about with the Apple Vision, you have to sit there with this damn battery pack on the side. Um, and so this is like actually exploring and going through virtual worlds. My kind of like question, this is a long way of asking the question, is do you actually think we're getting to a world where people are doing VR? Because like, we've been talking about it for 10, 10 15 years. And like you know there's all the, these are all the steps that it needs, but I'm just curious on your actual take on this. I feel like this is, the, this is kind of the barbell strategy to it, right? Like the opposite end of it, like what we first assumed VR would be is like you're fighting Mike Tyson in your living room, like chucking your fists around and running around to the edge of the room. And this is just like, no, like instead of sitting and staring at your screen for eight hours a day in a chair and having to sit a certain way, you could just like lay on the sofa and do your job like post pandemic remote work world. Does that have a higher TAM than people that want to be flailing around boxing or bowling or like hitting zombies with a shotgun, yeah. you know, yeah, like yeah. it feels to me like this is the, <laughs> this is the, 
this is the opposite end of the like go to market just in terms of like what you're going to be doing on there it's like writing emails doing meetings and like it still seems almost as superfluous and and uh like the adoption of that i think at first blush feels like yeah maybe it's not gonna happen but it is a completely different approach like it's a completely different um i don't know what those 150 apps are but i would bet most of them lean towards like video conferencing writing email the stuff that you do with your mac right? zoom zoom the mac, a, yeah the that. mac is not a gaming platform and hasn't ever been right it's like that's been a i think the ios is more of a like that took off as the the gaming platform within the apple ecosystem versus like the mac pro or whatever that was always pitted well, against it's like PC the it's like steve jobs said right the uh you nailed it mac is the bicycle for your mind right helping creatives uh helping people with photoshop and etc agreed I think Jack the only I was just looking uh, while you guys was talking. The only I remember at Charity Water we had this VR film we made. It was like a walk for water thing because you know in that world people will walk like several hours just to get water. So they basically made a mini documentary in VR. This is 2016. I was looking at the date, and that is actually quite an interesting use case. Like I can imagine them getting access to something like this and doing this because um at all of the physical events we would always have like this walk for war thing and people would just carry this this uh jerry can for like 10 20 meters and that is when you do that you're like oh damn people do this for a few hours it like you actually feel it a little bit and i remember this vr film remember um this dude come in office pretty well off dude what's this like left was left kind of like in tears and like gave a massive donation and so I'm just saying, like, I can see even for different use cases like this, it, there is actually kind of an interesting one there. So um, should we move on to Mang, boys? Because I think we, we yeah, got about half that. an hour. We, yeah, let's do that. All right, cool. Good, I, good. I was just going to do one more 30-second on, bit on the, Go on, the do Vision it, do Pro. It. Hit it. The, the 25 charts set up for the uh, <laughs> yeah, amateur yeah. trader. That's going to be one of the biggest oh, use cases God. of this is just, like, the six-screen setup. If you weren't distracted enough, with one or two screens, now you're gonna have twenty. So that meme and is so good. Like the recent and you're one still of the, gonna, the muscular guy. And you're still gonna guy. lose a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're exactly. gonna manage your hundred dollar portfolio. Oh yeah, my god, yeah. that's gonna be a big Incredible. use case for it for sure. Killing it. All right, so uh, let's move on to Mang versus VC. So we talked about this in the intro, but Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, and Google. Uh, the kind of headline here is there was a, a great little breakdown from. Let's give a shout out to the author. A uh, poor of. Uh, Agawal, yeah. um, a poor of Agawal. And uh, yeah, he's got a great breakdown here. A poor of O3.com. Yeah, let me share my screen here. So for the listeners, what Blau is going to be pulling up is a chart yeah. of uh, those Mang, which is uh, Microsoft, Amazon, NVIDIA, and Google, how much they have been doing uh, uh, VC investing uh, as opposed to just a standard venture capitalists. And it looks like here, Bilal, if I'm reading this correctly, in 2023, 8%. okay, in 2023, uh, there were $25 billion uh, in data and AI startups. Um, and Mang was responsible for 8% of them. So corporate VCs is not like a new thing. Like corporates have extra cash. They run a lot of v internal VC shops. I think, what, what's one of uh, Google called, uh, Bilal, GV? Uh, Google, Google Ventures. Ventures, they've got two, and then there's Google Capital, which is they're slightly different slightly focuses. Different. I think Google Ventures is the venture arm, and then uh, the other one is maybe like more strategic partnerships or something like that. I'm not sure. The main yeah. thing here that Bilal had pointed out in the intro, uh, and actually, what's interesting is that Bill Gurley commented about this. Uh, Bill Gurley, uh, benchmark, a famous uh, venture capital benchmark. A lot of these deals are being done with cloud credits. So when when Microsoft says it invested ten billion dollars into OpenAI for forty nine percent of the company, the majority of that dollar value is in using Azure. So the question then becomes: This is the roundabout question. I'll throw it to you guys. None of us are accountants here, but it is. I mean, I, why don't we just tease? One out of us has on, an expired CFA. So an close. expired CFA. But uh, what is our gut reaction to this? just like as people that hold lots of retail bags. <laughs> so yeah. Microsoft is using cloud credits to invest in OpenAI. 
OpenAI is taking that money, uh, or any extra money it has, and putting it back into Microsoft. So Microsoft's investment now marks up, and Microsoft's investment gets marked up because OpenAI has, you know what I mean? It's like, it sounds circular. like everything else we've been talking about in this pod for a while. It sounds like, uh, it yeah. sounds like I a mean, time bomb, right? It there's sounds a, like a something. ticking time bomb, yeah. And, and not yeah. to say that AI isn't a great thing, the technology isn't great. We're talking specifically about the valuation. It's an accounting, it's an accounting time exactly. bomb is what it is. Which is kind of like, that's kind of where I've landed with a lot of these things. Like when, even last night, I was talking to my friends about crypto because like some of them are into it, some of them aren't. And um, the ones who aren't were like, oh, that's something happened recently, didn't it? And we And they're like, yeah, but isn't a price just based on the fact that people want to buy it? And I'm like, yeah, but like basically everything. And so, but, and so this is the same thing here. Obviously, there's a lot more valuable stuff being built, but you have to separate that from the valuation of things. And I would say the same for real estate. It's like, yes, real estate, you get to live in and uh, you can rent it out and you can get yield from real estate. But the fact that our parents could buy a house for like two to four times their earnings and now it's 15 to 20 times earnings, depending on where you are, it's not like the utility is still there, but the valuation of it has changed over time because of what well, many reasons, but printing of the monies is one. Uh, Limited supply of homes. Exactly. But th that, that's a long way of saying that a lot of this is just based on, you know, people are willing to value something at a certain valuation and the incentives here are a little bit dodgy in my opinion, because it's kind of, they're like helping each other. It's like, yeah, you're, all, you're, you're taking one payment in credits, you're going to use the credits as the AI company, but then that's being marked up on your balance sheet as revenue for the company who gave Here's it to you. Cloud credit Look, adjusted. Cloud credit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, actually, let me give exactly. you something that is super interesting about this too. Remember how uh, a revenue gets translated into market cap, right? So you invest $5 billion. Let's say uh, Microsoft is investing $10 billion into OpenAI and OpenAI is spending half of that into uh, uh, Microsoft Cloud Credits. Every dollar that Microsoft gets, whatever, call it five, ten, 10 times revenue. I don't, I don't think that's what it is, but uh, I think it's closer to six or seven. Their market cap value is going up seven times, right? And, and it's their money. It's all because a dollar on their balance sheet is worth a lot less than a dollar yeah. in OpenAI's Azure Credits, right? So it's like, there's something going on. People are going to have to figure this out because that, because of how important infrastructure is in all this. Not investment advice. That's my final takeaway. Yeah, and it doesn't well, like, mean like anyone's even doing something to do some fraudulent stuff. It's more like the the, the not, people aren't going into details with a lot of this stuff. Like it's, yeah. if everything's working, going up, everyone's kind of happy until it's not. And we've seen that play out many times. Sorry, Jack, go for it. I was going to say there is like a good analogy of the nation state like these things are so big that they can print their own currency right that they can mm, uh yeah. that's actually valuable yeah yeah exactly it has a market value because of what they're capable of and their reputation and all that stuff but there comes a point where you overextend the uh ious and they're betting on the value of this thing as everybody does in these situations like overlapping the investment that they've made and yeah it is like this uh there's no there's no new capital entering the ecosystem to try and accelerate that trajectory except for the 20 dollars a month that you and i are going on and signing up for that stuff so let me extend jack's analogy the Azure credits in Jack's analogy, they're worth a lot more than FTX's FTT token. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, yeah. Oh, both, yeah, exactly. They're That's both a good kind of comparison. fake money. But you have the credit, like, you know how people joke about the uh, the US dollar? What's back in the US dollar? Then the aircraft carriers, like B-52 bombers. And uh, yeah, like what's backing uh, the, the Azure credit? It's like 100,000 employees. Uh, the IP that's built up over 50 years, the lock-in that uh, that office Microsoft Office has with corporate America, right? That's what well, I think on the at a, at a raw level, it's the compute power, right? Which is a oh yeah, they have physical Bitcoin data analogy, centers. Which is they a, have um, physical a, data centers. It is like it is analogous to Bitcoin. It's like a token that has value that moves value around based on a network of computers. Energy. There you go. <laughs> An encrypted wall of energy. <laughs> That's what we're talking about here, boys. Which, in in a lot of cases, like 
I might be getting out of my skis on this statement here, but is a is equivalent to capital for a business that that's the resource that they need more than capital, right? Is yes. like they would all they would be spending money on anyway is, is on compute. computer power. Well, yeah. let's 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 transition to what Bilal teed up. Zuck announced that Facebook and Meta are going to create artificial general intelligence and that when they do it, well, scare quotes, responsibly, they're going to open source it. I have no yeah. idea. Eh, you're going to open source Terminator? Whatever, man. I don't know what that means. But we've obviously talked about Meta has been playing the open source game with AI. But to Jack's exact point, what did Zuck say in his uh, Insta or Facebook or Instagram post announcing this uh, move? They bought 150,000 H100 chips from NVIDIA. Oh, He's yeah. flexing. He's flexing the... Fa so people did math. How much is that worth? It yeah, was a big number. Worth. $10 billion worth of chips. And this is what's so funny. People kept bringing it up. It's like, think about how big of a flex that is for NVIDIA. Right? You are in someone else's public pronouncement. Your product is a shorthand for what Jack just said. Peer Your product is AI. We're creating a uh, AGI. How are we going to do it? 150,000 chips. Without these chips, we could do dick. So exactly to Jack's point is like, it's energy. It's, it's quite literally more important than money. Like you cannot do this without these chips. That is the constraint. Yeah. Information. Uh, gone. There's gone. an Elon quote in there, right? It's like money is information. And this is the like a pure expression of that too is the processing, like the raw material that processes and moves information is more valuable than the intermediary number that you transfer to someone to buy those credits anyway. And I'm assuming like price per, I don't, that has got to be some phenomenal calculation being made of like, is it the market price of tokens as a retail consumer would buy them? Because you're like, you're able to, to value your own currency in that instance, right? You get away from even the the dollar as a an an indicator that measures things across the market coming from different places when you're able to just assign your own value to those tokens then uh i guess the onus is on you to get as close to the like, actual market value as possible so things don't blow up in your face right yeah you have incentive to i mean you you probably want to like you said, the, the, the temptation to overvalue is so high, yeah. but to your point, reality always, gravity always wins. So you, you want to keep a little bit, one foot in reality. Pretty fascinating. And, and like even yeah. the, those things being called tokens, you know, like that to me is the, is the other interesting thing, like at pop, pop culture scale. Like at compute tokens is gonna is gonna like bring that into the vernacular anyway. Good, uh, that's a good one, boys. That yeah, good bands, boys. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, should we? I guess Zach and Altman. We kind of touched on Zach. There's not that yeah, much can, here can, on Altman. We've Even mentioned Altman, Altman is a headline. He's basically seeking to raise billions uh, for a network of AI chip factories. We've touched on it on the pod before. So the 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 main takeaway is this is direction things are still going in. And there's a lot of big moves being made, and uh, there's a so big would be a, VC in town. Go an on. NVIDIA competitor, supposedly. Yeah, he wants to basically. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you something. The last thought I'll have on this is like the uh, the Taiwan's a big choke point for all this, right? So like this has oh, yeah, interest good point. for yeah. the. I mean, can you do it? The the big thing I've seen, which is contra to his position, is like this is a national security issue. And like, they're going to be like, we're going to let Sam, like the government's going to be, we're going to let Sam Altman like work around and work with the Middle East on this. It's like, eh, we're probably going to have either, he's going to work for, at the end of the day, like the US government's going to have a say in this, right? And they're going to be like, Sam, cool that you want to do this, but actually we'll take it from here. Or because they did this giant chips act, which was to subsidize a lot of this, they're subsidizing the hell out of Intel. They're helping TSMC build a factory in Arizona. But having said all that, uh, yeah, big news. Uh, but that, let's uh, let's move on to Malay. Yeah. All right. So let's talk Malay. So you guys, uh, people have probably seen this in their feeds, but he is the 
president of Argentina. You might have seen him in the last few months with a chainsaw because that was his like a uh, very striking visual that he was campaigning on. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know too much about him. I did. We spoke about I lived in. I, well, live, I spent a few months in Argentina. So I got to see kind of like a lot of the problems of what where the country had landed and learned a bit about the history there. But um, he's kind wow, of trying hold to on. revive. Tell us a bit, actually. Yeah. Uh, you probably um, know more than I do. You're the history guy. But from no, what I'd I know. I'd like to because I've never been to Buenos Aires. Did you stay in Buenos Aires? Yeah, I stayed in Buenos Aires for a couple of months and then went to Mendoza, wine country in the north, and then Patagonia uh, in the south, which is okay. beautiful. Let me but cheer yeah. up a couple of things and I'm, let me pepper you the questions. Go so this is a total uh, spectator, not in the arena like Bilal being on the ground. But, uh, you know, Argentina, this is covered on the All In podcast quite a bit. And I actually, I meant to read, there's a really good Economist article a couple of years ago about what happened in Argentina. So Argentina mm. was as rich as Germany and France 100 years ago. Yeah. And uh, if you look at it, we, we briefly talked about Peter Zahan here, but we talked about why is America so powerful, right? We talked about the geography of America. The Mississippi River system is one of the greatest river systems in the world. Uh, and uh, rivers are important because water helps you transport goods much cheaper than on the roads. And uh, that helps. I mean, if you go to any great civilization, you go to the Yellow River in China, that's where all the cities are. You go to the Mekong in Southeast Asia, that's where Vietnam is. The Ruhr in Europe is where Germany and France are. Uh, Nile is obviously super famous. A lot of uh, I mean, the first civilizations are around the Nile River. Water transportation is extremely important before the Industrial Revolution happened. The reason I bring all this up is Argentina has incredible geography. Right, Bilal? You probably, 100 years ago, they were one of the top exporters of, uh, of cows in the world. I think they still are up there. But like, they eat a lot of steak. People mm -hmm. eat a lot of steak, right? Yeah. So a lot, their agriculture, the, uh, a great climate uh, for agriculture, uh, good protection from neighbors, largely. Uh, they got the two, like, they don't have to worry about Asia, uh, uh, the overpopulation in Asia, and then obviously Europe has its big issues. That's why America, right? It's got the two oceans between it. It's like a, effectively an island. But Argentina has all the advantages that you'd want for a potential superpower. And 100 years ago, they were very much in the conversation for superpower. And then they just had this sequence of terrible governments, a lot of military coups, they went very socialist, and uh, Malay is like basically the opposite of all that. You've probably heard of the hyperinflation in Argentina. Yeah, it's a lot. It's crazy. So I mean, Bilal, that is something I did experience because you. So would, let me tee you. I tee yeah, up everything. On, Talk through those things, man. Like, what did you? Experience? So yeah, I mean, the, the the big thing I remember is like speaking to people there, like local people, and hearing like lots of them keep cash. Like we've talked about, it's probably on the pod because of Bitcoin and stuff like that. Um, but they would literally keep cash under their mattress. Like people say that as a joke, but they literally keep it under their bed or under the mattress because there was a time, I think early 2000s, where, you know, everything was going well. It seemed like it was going well for a while and then maybe things started to pop off a little bit. But um, they went to their banks and they weren't able to take their money out. And that was the first time they were like, what the hell happened here? Um, and since then, they just, look, most people don't trust their, their currency. And, um, and so... People want access to the US dollar when I was there anyway. This is 2019, uh, I think I was there. Um, but I've heard it's even more so the case. One of my really good friends is there right now and he was telling me there are these like areas where you go to just get black market money. Like you'll go and try to convert your money to dollars from dollars to local money or vice the versa. Black market exchange rate, right? Not like yeah. the official government one, yeah. which is useless. Which is useless, exactly. So if you actually want to do a proper transaction, that's what people were doing. So yeah, that, that was one big thing of just this this con lack of confidence in the in the currency itself. Um, and then just, yeah, it was, it was a lot of poverty, man. Like, I mean, beautiful play. I loved it. Like, I would love to go back there again, but just definitely like you feel a bit on edge like the, wherever How you're going. How near was the poverty to like the super nice places? I mean, pretty close because even, I mean, in Buenos Aires where most people stay when you're like a tourist, I think it's called Palermo, uh, Palermo Soho maybe. And then there's like Palermo Hollywood, if I'm not confusing this with another city, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, and so we basically stayed right near there. And even in those areas, it's like, you know, very modern, expensive, like for the local area. Obviously for us, it's, it's quite cheap, but just has like nice restaurants, cafes, stuff like that. But even there, you'd see people coming in, like people would get jacked. Like while I was there, I saw that. 
Um, and so luckily I, I never did, but like a lot of people that we met said they were just during the day walking down the street in a bar and like they'll get surrounded and, and get jacked by people oh, and daylight. stuff like that. Just like, yeah, just I mean, but I, I heard that and I never saw it myself properly. So, okay. you know, it's one of those, you can't tell if it's just like people's stories getting the better of them. But anyway, so that's, that's the sort of stuff I'd see there. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a lot of the history. Obviously, after the World War, I think there were a lot of people that came from Europe. I think that's when a lot of the Italians came there. Um, so, yeah, they, they have a lot of pride. They have, you know, really beautiful culture, but they kind of like they've always seen themselves as like the Europeans of South America is what I've been told because of that history yeah. coming coming from Europe. So, uh, yeah. All right. Let's talk about Malay, the Argentinian president. You said he won Davos. Trung, you want to tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, this? just the last thing I say is like the speech obviously was big. He was just going contra everybody there. He said the government's getting too big. They're uh, applying these socialist policies that have sucked hard in Argentina. He's like, just look at look at what happened to our country. But the real reason he won, in my opinion, is uh, he he flew there in commercial. He flew on commercial, dude. That's just good, man, dude. We talked about the chainsaw earlier. How he uses chainsaw to cut all these policies. That's just good politicking, man. That's just a good politician. Counter positioning. Everybody's fine in a private jet. I'm gonna go commercial. The con oh, this is a Jack Butcher thing. The contrast. Did you see, uh, have you seen this interview with him where uh, he's an economist, right? So he uses all these financial metaphors. He's like, politicians should suffer for the decisions they make. A derivative never has more value than the underlying asset itself. Oh. Therefore, a politician that represents the people should never ascend the value of the people themselves. How powerful is that? Jim. Jack. You're messaging guy. You need to do a, a visual, a visualization of that. Uh, he is, uh, he's cutting through right now for sure. With the chainsaw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you seen that video of him on the whiteboard? Oh Fire. my good, unreal, oh, man, incredible. unreal. Um, all right, let's do the last topic. I know Jack's got a boogie, so why don't we just fire through this? Yeah, yeah. And Jack, if you need to leave any time, just let us know. We can just yeah, chat just about it. But um, so yeah, that was on Malay. I will say people should check out the video. We can put a link. In the show notes, is he, he gave it in Spanish, right? But there was this yeah. video going online where they translated using AI um, to English, and it was pretty cool. There's like I think it's Eleven Labs and Hey Gen. They're the two things that were used there. I think Barely Eleven Labs really just became dropped the ball here. We could have we could have gone. You could have been just, that, yeah. But I think Eleven Labs just became a billion dollar unicorn company as well, very recently as well. So oh, okay. uh, yeah. So um, anyway, so let's talk a little bit about Pitchfork. Um, and the slow death of media. You said it gradually, then suddenly, Trunk. What's going on in the well, media the, world here? Well, let's let's tee up Jack. I know he likes that one. Jack, what is the gradually but suddenly quote? Who is that from? And what is it referring to? They're putting a lot of uh, faith in my <laughs> memory here. Ernest Hemingway, right? Correct. How did you go bankrupt? This dialogue from an earning Ernest Hemingway novel. How did you go bankrupt is the question. And the answer is, Gradually, then suddenly. No, it's That's gradually, exactly. then all at once, wasn't it? But, I, I think it's gradually, then suddenly. So I believe it's yeah. from The Sun Also Rises. Uh, but uh, is it from Sun Also Rises? Uh, yes. Sure. Two ways. Yeah. He said, how'd you go bankrupt? We missed a good part of it. Two ways. <laughs> gradually, then suddenly. <laughs> all right. There we go. There's so the full quote. One, of the, one of the greatest lines ever, right? It's the whole idea is like, it's like the idea of boiling a frog. It's like when you put a frog in a pot of water, you can boil it to death. It's like they don't realize what's happening until you're dead. The water's boiling, right? But basically, media has been dying for 20 years, traditional media. Everybody knows the newspaper example. Newspapers had a local monopoly because they ran on printers and they ran the trucks and delivered newspapers, right? And the internet comes, destroys it. So a couple of points I bring out here and I point you to, and then I'll leave thoughts with you guys to reply on. Derek Thompson from the Ringer's Plain English podcast had a great podcast about the death of media. I think it came out this morning, actually, or yesterday. And uh, he brought up some very good points. We will be familiar with these points, but he made it in a concise 40-minute chat. So what did the internet do to the traditional media package, right? I, I'd say two things. Media is a bundle. Uh, typically, you'd have classified ads, which made a ton of money, uh, combined with uh, international reporting, so maybe a war in Iraq, with local reporting. 
right? Each of those individually, they're not worth as much and people are only willing to pay for X amount, right? Because the New York Times, which is the most successful version of this, what is the New York Times really? It's honestly, it's a Wordle. It's yeah, the cooking I was going to say, yeah. Right? And, uh, and, and what's the other one? Uh, wire cutter. It's the games, right? It's like reviews. a games and cooking app. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Classified. Basis classified reviews. What, uh, Wordle is like the crossword or whatever that you yeah, used to do in the back of your- Yeah, that's what people really are paying yeah. for. And they're taking that money and subsidizing real reporting, real fact checking. And for people who don't know, nine, 20 years ago, 90% of New York Times is advertising, I meant revenue is advertising. Now it's 80% subscription based. And subscription based, the problem with media that we're finding out is it's winner take all. We know this, we talk about it all the time. How many newspapers are you going to subscribe to? I'll give you an idea. The Washington Post, which also had major mind share, it's losing $100 million a year. It's owned by Jeff Bezos. Mr. Tech Media is losing a ton of money every year. LA Times just laid off 40% of its staff. It's also owned by Patrick Shin Cheng, which is a multi, it's a billionaire. He's a biotech billionaire, very smart guy. But the New York Times is running away with this kind of like, who do you go to for hardcore factual news? And, uh, and it's, it's hitting everybody else. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave it with this. Uh, Derek Thompson brought up this point. He said these middle publications, somebody like the Sports Illustrated that could have survived in a subscription world in the 90s, somebody like Pitchfork, which is a 2000 plus publication, which is ad based, but it could still be standalone and not get stuck because the ad market is getting destroyed, right? Uh, for media. Basically, you could be a solo creator. A lot of solo creators of Substacks are crushing it. Or you are basically in New York Times, and, which is like the death star for media. He called New York, New York Times empire and then these solo creators like Substack uh, a city states. Those two things can survive. Something we've talked about in this podcast, the middle is going to get gutted. If you're like a... If you were 20 years ago, a very popular local newspaper, if you're Buffalo's top news site 20 years ago, you're not competing against New York Times anymore because somebody in Buffalo, they're just going to, they're just going to go to the New York Times because one thing, big thing that did happen over the past 20 years is people care a lot more about national politics and national politics has become basically like the WWE, right? It's like you care about Trump v. Biden instead of local politics, even though you should care about local politics more. So I'll throw all those thoughts out there. Any last thoughts from you guys uh, or thoughts before we wrap up? Because I know Jack has to leave. You boys have read any uh, Marshall McLuhan? The medium is the message. The medium is the message. <laughs> the global village. That idea of, this is written in the 60s, but the commentary on electronic media condensing the narrative, which basically just tracks with what you're saying about there are these singular voices and, and things start to consolidate. And yeah, as is the case with everything, basically everything we talk about, like middle being no man's land, even these brands that had like massive cult followings that the backlash to them is so extreme that they built this real, they just have a terrible business model, right? Like they create stuff that people want, but that is not always enough, especially if you're on the internet where that there's always someone competing for that attention that was willing to do it for less than you are uh, to run it back. We got a reference episode 66 on every uh, conversation we have is just like the competition that exists in media is so extreme. So if you can't carve that niche out, it's very hard to win. I got wrong. There is no second best. There is no second best. <laughs> no, that's a great exactly. way to end it. Perfect. No, perfect. Nice one, boys. Thanks for, uh, jamming with us everyone today and we'll see you next week cheers yeah, bye bye peace out